Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the magnetic field of our planet and the resolution to the mystery of the so-called wandering magnetic field, which refers to the more recent discovery that the magnetic north of our planet was surprisingly moving a little bit too fast. It's actually moving away from North Canada to what seems to be northern Russia. So let's talk about this in a little bit more detail and welcome to What The Math. So, a few years ago, we've discovered that the North Magnetic North, that is, was moving a little bit too fast. Like, way too fast. Approximately 50 kilometers per year. This was actually way faster than we originally predicted, and so a lot of different agencies around the world had to readjust their calculations for the Magnetic North in order to basically change the parameters in various, like for example satellites, a lot of digital compasses, a lot of digital navigation systems, and so on. So essentially this is something that happened very suddenly and the scientists really couldn't explain and understand why it was happening. And even though we originally knew that the magnetic north was always sort of moving around and was never really that stable, we never expected it to leave northern Canada and had no explanation for why it did so. Until possibly now. So first of all, let's actually talk about the north of our planet. Mostly because there are three different norths our planet has and you have to understand the differences. First of all, we have something known as the geographic north. This of course refers to the north formed by the rotation of our planet. Here you can actually see it quite easily. If I enable the rotation, you'll see that our planet is basically spinning around the so-called geographic axis. But this is something that has pretty much almost nothing to do with the magnetic field or with the magnetic north. Because here, you're about to see where the magnetic north is. Now this is something that's slightly different from what we're talking about today. But essentially this right here is what a lot of various compasses and a lot of navigation systems use. This axis here is formed by what's known as geomagnetic pole. And it basically is a kind of an average of all of the magnetic fields, all of the miniature magnetic fields, each of which is extremely complex and their average effect can be sort of summarized as an extremely large magnet inside our planet, which is literally how we normally calculate these so-called magnetic poles. Basically, the magnetic north and magnetic south in this case is kind of like the average of this really large magnet on the inside, which is technically not how any of this works in reality. Because as you can see from this particular simulation, all of this is a lot more complex and involves these individual masses underneath our planet that sort of rotate and spin and create their own miniature fields that can then be combined into one large field. So what you should get from all of this is that the magnetic field of our planet is extremely complex, even though it's usually summarized as just a single axis. And this right here does not show us the true location of the so-called geomagnetic north, which is basically defined as the location where you can stand right there on the surface, and the actual axis will be pointed directly upwards and downwards. So it's one of those locations where the compass needle of your compass would be going in circles without really acquiring any north or any south. And that so-called geomagnetic north has been traveling around and changing positions in the past few years. And this is exactly what the scientists are trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out why it's doing it. And this unusual motion of a geomagnetic north has been a mystery for the past few years, ever since we originally discovered it. So trying to understand why the geomagnetic north has been moving so much, unpredictably as a matter of fact, created a few problems for the scientists because there's always been a speculation of our magnetic field also potentially flipping in the future and creating the period where there is actually no magnetic field on the planet at all. And this is something we definitely know happened on our planet several times in the past. And as you can see right here, during the so-called reversal, the actual poles are completely chaotic and the magnetic field weakens quite dramatically. And the weakening of the magnetic field is obviously not something we would like to see. Mostly because a lot of our technology would probably become completely obsolete. It's not really ready for receiving the really high turbulent and dangerous emissions from our sun, specifically the solar flares, where even a single solar flare without the magnetic field would not just strip our planet of a little bit of atmosphere, but it would also most likely destroy most of the technology on the planet, possibly even within like a few hours or so. 
Now this is something we do want to study in a little bit more detail, so these magnetic flipping events are really important for us. And so the scientists in the past few years were trying to figure out, is this what's going to happen? Is this why the north, the geomagnetic north, is moving so fast from North Canada to Siberia? And the good news here is that it's very likely that this is not what's happening. The magnetic field is not about to flip anytime soon, and the scientists behind the recently published paper may have actually figured out what's happening here and explained this in a little bit more detail. Now, all of their data and all of their calculations come from these three beautiful satellites by the European Space Agency, normally referred to as the Swarm. Three of them are essentially responsible for studying our magnetosphere in a lot of detail and has been doing a pretty good job since 2013. There's actually a really long and very detailed explanation of the mission on the ESA website and a lot of it explains why this mission is really important for us. But I think I've kind of told you the natural of this importance previously when I mentioned the flipping of the poles and basically our need to understand how the magnetic field is generated. And so this mission allowed us to create these simulations in trying to basically understand how our Earth interacts with the sun's emissions and how all of this protects our planet from various types of dangerous radiation. And most importantly, it allowed us to see how the magnetic field also changes as various conditions inside our planet change, and as the actual processes inside the planet kind of move the poles around as well. And according to all of their simulations and their detailed study, there are essentially these two really large blobs of matter underneath the North Canada and also underneath Siberia, which are responsible for generating the large amounts of magnetic field in these regions. We've actually been discovering more and more similar blobs inside our planet, and for the most part we actually just have no idea what makes them, how they behave, we just know that they're really large, and uh, their interaction seems to be responsible for the creation of the magnetic field. I guess one of the easier explanations and examples here would be a typical lava lamp, which does seem to possess somewhat similar effects where the convection sort of drives the three-dimensional motion of this thing on the inside, the blob on the inside, and in some sense we think this is how all of this works. Obviously this is still a very early assumption. And so the scientists behind this paper discovered that it seems that the blob underneath North Canada has been slowly weakening in strength, whereas the blob underneath Siberia has been strengthening. Which is exactly why, according to them, the geomagnetic north is now moving to Siberia, where it's probably going to be eventually in the next few decades. And so this just shows us how little we understand about the magnetic field of our planet and how this strengthening of one blob and weakening of the other blob can always change the location of the magnetic pole or the geomagnetic pole and thus shift the actual magnetic field of our planet just a little bit. And this obviously should not come as a surprise because not so long ago we also discovered that something way stranger happens around other planets, including this right here, this is actually Jupiter. We've discovered that Jupiter seems to have two south uh, geomagnetic poles, and this right now has no explanation. And so it shouldn't really come as a surprise to us if one day our planet decides to have several poles as well, even when it's not going through the so-called flipping event when the magnetic north and magnetic south switch places. All of this just means that we have to study our planet in a little bit more detail and try to simulate and predict this a little bit better using some of the modern computer systems and supercomputers that can actually simulate this quite precisely. So hopefully in the future, with the help of the Swarm mission from ESA and with the help of various supercomputers, We'll be able to go from just thinking of the magnetic field as north and south to thinking and also understanding it as something really complex, really dynamic and somewhat predictable but not to the extent where we know for a fact what it's going to do in the next few decades. But this is still extremely important for us to study because our planet and our survival on the planet depends on understanding and protection of the magnetic field. Today we know for a fact that without the magnetic field Mars became dry and lost its atmosphere and basically became an uninhabitable planet even though originally it probably looked something similar to Earth. So knowing and understanding how the magnetic field changes is extremely important for us. And honestly, I think it's one of the more important Earth and planetary science fields and needs to be sort of focused on in the next few decades. And although it's still important to study other things as well, like for example collisions with our planet and um, various types of dangerous asteroids, it's still a lot more important for us to understand the uh, actual inner workings of Earth 
to be able to then apply all of this knowledge to another exoplanet and possibly discover another planetary object out there that we can one day settle. So trying to learn more about Earth itself is going to teach us about the rest of the universe and other planets out there. But thanks to this particular study, we now probably don't have to worry about the flippening of the magnetic field for at least a few decades, possibly even longer. We didn't really think this is what's happening. And thanks to the scientists from this paper, we now know that these particular effects are just something natural that happens in our planet, something that we just need to kind of understand and, I guess, live with. So the changes in the geomagnetic north is basically a natural occurrence. But on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this paper. If you'd like to learn more, check out the paper in the description below and also subscribe to this channel because there are going to be a lot more similar videos coming in the future where we're going to explore other unusual phenomena we discovered in the last few decades. But until we learn more about Earth or until we learn more about the magnetic field, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.